We are so thankful that you've joined us today for Hope Today, and that's just what we're going to give you is some hope. Yes. We are your hosts, Matt Cogley, <laughs> Amanda Brocker, and we have an amazing program yeah. that is definitely going to shine some light into our lives. Absolutely. You know, Amanda, I feel bad for anybody who misses this episode because we are blessed with an amazing guest by the name of Batty Mason. She's a two-time Dove Award winning and a Grammy nominated recording artist and has written many books, including this one that's going to be coming out soon, which is Each One, Reach One, Everyday Ways Can Shine, or You Can Shine God's Light. I love the topic of just ministering, evangelizing, because it's good to hear a lot of different perspectives, right? It's, it's really uncomfortable to do so, but obviously it's what we need to do in this day. That's right. So just thinking about, you know, being salt and light in the world, yeah. you know, what does that mean to you? Salt, well, it's flavor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's bringing something to, especially the, the God colors and the earth, you know, the way I like to look at evangelism is it's bringing life to death. It's bringing light to darkness. And I think a lot of, well, we know this, the world needs it, but there's like a tension sometimes I think with it, right? Things that compete against it. Why, why do you feel that is, Amanda? Uh, just the uncomfortableness, our yeah. flesh. I think we're always battling, you know, your spirit's like, go over there and talk to that person. And your uh -huh. flesh is like, I don't know that person. What will yeah. they think if I yeah. go over and talk to them? You yeah. know what I mean? Like we have this inward battle going on, which is talked about in the Bible and Galatians. And yeah. it's really important for each of us to surrender to the leading of the spirit mm. because how are we gonna reach another if we're not willing to go beyond ourselves? Yeah, that's so true. We can't do it in our own ability. Mm -hmm. Thank God for the help of the Holy Spirit. Thankful for his word and that's thankful right. that we have a testimony to mm -hmm. share, right? So today our guest is gonna help us because our next guest is a, like I mentioned early, a two-time Dove Award winner and a Grammy nominated recording artist and songwriter whose timeless musical compositions are considered modern day church classics. Babby Mason has a heart for evangelism and she joins us to share how she or how you can shine your light and reach out to others with the gospel in ways you never thought were even possible. Babby, it's a pleasure to have you here with us on Hope Today. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. You know, we, okay, so we want to dive right into this. Talk about this book you have. You know, I, I really commend you because it's one thing to hear songwriters, you know, just write about thoughts and dreams and ideas, but it's another to really live out what they're writing. And I know this book has birthed from something out of a song that you have written. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, well, you're absolutely right. The, the book actually is inspired by a song that I wrote in the 90s by the same name, Each One Reach One. But the whole movement that is taking place in my life is birthed out of my life. I reached 50 years of walking with, with Jesus a few years ago. Wow. And during that monumental season of my life, I did some inner, uh, some introspection, a, a time of just examining my faith during that 50th year. I call that year my year of Jubilee. <laughs> and just kind of did a review of my walk with the Lord. And during that time, it was just revealed to me by the Lord that there were some areas in my life that I needed to celebrate and some areas in my life that I needed to shore up. Mm -hmm. And one of the areas that I needed to just pay attention to and to just uh, shore up in my life is the area of having more boldness and confidence in the area of sharing my faith with others. Wow. You see, I grew up in the church. I'm a church girl. My, my daddy was a pastor. I my father pastored one church for 40 years. Wow. I was very actively involved in the church as a child. So church is my life. And it's been real easy for me to share my testimony from the stage. I could recite it like a script. But as you all just said a moment ago, sharing my faith one-on-one -on -one with others was sometimes uh, a, 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 a bit intimidating. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I would forget my words that I learned in the evangelism class. You know what I'm talking about? And so I just prayed and asked God to help me fix that. Mm -hmm. I confessed that I wanted to change that. And so I prayed a simple prayer uh, of confession and just saying, God, if you will help me with this, you'll place me in situations and circumstances where I can shine my light and share my faith yeah. and speak up for you, then I'll do it. And the answer to that prayer 
is in this book uh, called Each One Reach One, Everyday Ways You Can Shine God's Light. And the book is filled full of not only evangelism tools, which are very practical, but also amazing stories, how the Lord began to walk that prayer out in my life. That's good. Let's talk about that a little bit, just that intimidation factor, because I think that's a big struggle for even just a lot of believers and how they want to witness, whether to a family member, co-worker, someone they might meet in the marketplace. You know, why do you feel like or what encouragement would you give to somebody who kind of feels that struggle with that intimidation? Yeah, I know exactly what you mean, because that was a big struggle for me. But I'll tell you, uh, one of the ways the Lord helped me to overcome that and it kind of took me off guard when it really began to happen. And I began to ask God when these encounters would happen, what just happened here? But mm -hmm. the Lord began to show me that um, kindness, generosity, caring for others, being attentive to the needs of others, particularly in the day and age in which we, in which we live, when mm -hmm. so many people are hurting, uh, particularly during an election year, when people can be at odds or words can fly, kindness is a really powerful tool. Mm -hmm. And we think that kindness, sometimes people might think that kindness is being soft, but actually kindness is a superpower yeah. because you cannot, you cannot um, serve the world with kindness without really being controlled by the Holy Spirit because mm -hmm. kindness is a fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. But let me give you a, a quick example of how the Lord has shown me how to even um, maybe even disarm, you know, people in a situation like that. Even a simple greeting or a compliment can, a, and an act of kindness can bring down walls, wow. open up the heart where people can, where you can talk about Jesus all day long. For example, I um, was in shopping in a, in a nearby store where I just run in and out of sometimes. And right behind me, as I was getting my cart, Right behind me was an older lady who was beautifully dressed. And I just stopped to compliment her. I mean, she had on a beautiful suit and a hat and a scarf and matching hose and shoes. And I mean, she was really just decked out. And so I stopped to compliment her. And I, I said, excuse me, ma'am, but may I tell you how beautiful you look today? Mm -hmm. Well, that dear lady, to my surprise, began to model her outfit right down the aisle of the, shop, of the, of the, of the store. And she walked down a few steps and she turned on her heels and she walked back to me and just me and a total stranger just enjoying a, 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 a spontaneous moment. And then she opened up her heart just that quickly. How a, how a greeting or a, a word of kindness or a compliment can disarm people. She said this to me. She said mm -hmm. that her husband had passed away six months prior to that and he always complimented her on the way she dressed. And she said that her husband had passed, and since his passing, there had been no one there to tell her how nice she looked. She said my compliment to her was the first compliment that she wow. had uh, received in the six months since he passed. And this is what I've learned, that when you use sympathy, I'm sorry for your loss. Mm. Empathy, I know what you've been through. I've had loss in my life, too. You see how uh, just showing a person that you care, taking a moment, look inside their pain because right on the heels of pain we can minister to that pain and that's what I began to do with a little empathy and a little sympathy I began to minister Jesus and when people are in pain they will they will reach for a lifeline and the lifeline is Jesus I shared some encouraging words with her um, that I I believe the Lord spoke into my heart for her in that moment tears began to stream down her face then I said this and I've done this so many times I said do you mind if I pray for you and not once, Amanda and Matt, not once has anyone ever said, no, don't pray for me. As a matter of fact, they've been very eager. Please, please pray for me. When you find people who are in need, like I said, they're looking for a lifeline. Well, I prayed a prayer for her. She said, oh, can I give you a hug? I said, yes. I wrapped her in my arms. I blessed her in Jesus' name. And in just a few moments, it didn't take very much time. In a few moments, we were, we were uh, gone uh, on our shopping. But you see... What, what opened up the whole moment was an act of kindness. Kindness wow. is a fruit of the Spirit. Kindness emanates from the heart of God. And we can read the New Testament and see how Jesus even used kindness to minister to so many people in the New Testament. That's right. Wow. 
I mean, I love how you're sharing it like that. I think that a lot of times people feel like they might struggle for the right words, right? They feel like maybe I've got to come and I've got to know the scripture. I've got to know the Bible cover to end, you know, front to back. But it's that simple. It's just the kindness of God sharing simple words. What would you say to somebody? Because I feel like maybe someone that might be watching, well, that's easy for you to do, Babby. You've grown up in the church. You're a celebrity. You know what you're doing. But I don't have a platform like you. How would you encourage somebody like that? I'm so glad you asked that question because, Matt, you don't need a pulpit. You don't yes. need a platform. You don't need a rote speech to be kind, to be generous, to uh, meet the needs of others through a simple act of kindness, an encouraging word. I've uh, said to, like, like the dear lady that I met in the store that day, I just gave her a compliment. Yeah. A simple compliment or a thank you, sir, as, I, as he opens the door for me. I'll tell you what, another, uh, not just long ago, this story is not even in the book because these events happen all the time. I'm in, I think the grocery store is my, is my mission field. I'm headed to the rotisserie chicken, okay? And I, I'm headed in to get, grab a chicken and there's a lady who had just grabbed hers and she's walking the other way. And I just simply said, hello, my friend, how are you? And actually stopped. I know, you know, not just in passing, not just uh, looking around her or trying to get there quickly, but actually engaging, looking her in the eye. Mm -hmm. And I said, hello, my friend, how are you today? And I found this to be true, that when you ask people how they're doing and you stop and wait for an answer, they will tell you. Wow. They will tell you how they're doing. And so I said, mm -hmm. how are you, my friend? She said, well, I'm okay. Now the Lord is teaching me to be an intentional listener. Yes. I'm talking about those of us who really want to minister to the hearts Love and that. the lives of others. And it's typically people in pain. Yeah. And she said, I'm okay. And I said, just okay? It's amazing how people will open up their hearts to a total stranger who cares. Wow. And I said, just okay? And she said, yeah, day after tomorrow, I'm gonna have a heart calf and I'm not really sure what they're gonna find. I saw that she wore a cross around her neck. You see, just pay attention. Just be observant to what's going on in that moment. And I said, do you know the Lord? And she said, yes, I do. I said, well, you know, the Bible tells us that we don't have to be anxious in times like these. But in, even in our anxiety, we can pray and the Lord will give us peace that passes all understanding that will mm -hmm. guard our heart and our minds in these kind of situations. Do you believe that? Wow. Tears just begin to flow down her face. Listen, here's something you talk about. How do, how do we get, how do we do this? Just like you practice piano or just like you practice guitar, spend, spend time practicing. I practice in my car. I practice, you know, just being, just practice my lines and just say, well, do you mind if I pray for you? Yes, I prayed for her and just prayed a simple prayer, blessed her in Jesus' name, reminded her that Jesus is her savior, reminded her that Jesus is with her, and I'm praying that God will reunite us in the grocery store. But it's just having a simple, kind conversation with someone in need. Wow, Amen. that's powerful. I mean, being so intentional with listening, I think is a huge key. Well, hey, I wanna share this scripture because I know it's near and dear to you, especially for this book too. But in Matthew 5, 14 through 16, it says, You are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Babby, you like to call this the great mandate. Explain why. Yes. Well, thank you for mentioning the book. I do happen to have a copy right here. I'm not sure if it's front or back but, or backwards, but it looks like this. And uh, I love the Great Commission in Matthew chapter 28. Mm -hmm. And it tells us, it begins with the word go. It's called the Great Commission. Well, when I began to study this passage, the whole book is written on Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. Mm -hmm. And as I began to study that passage, the Lord brought to my mind that this is a mandate. This is the great mandate. Now, a mandate is given, it's a word of instruction given to us by an authority figure. And the instructions are meant to be carried out. And what this reminds me of is that the Great Commission is not called the Great Suggestion. But it's a mandate that Matthew chapter 5, yes. verse 14 through 16 is a mandate. 
The, the, these are words of instructions from Jesus, our Savior, our master teacher, who tells us to go into our world and shine our light. And listen, I'm a word person. I'm a communicator. I love to talk to people. But you can shine Jesus online. Yeah. You can. I love to speak to public audiences. You can shine Jesus one-on-one -on -one with friends and family. You can shine Jesus online. You can shine, yeah, show, show pictures of what you had for dinner last night. That's great. But also share your testimony. Share your story. We all have one. You have a salvation story. Share it. There are many, when you read the book, you'll find different ways, even uh, according to your personality or the way you're bent, there are different ways that you can share your faith and shine your light. You know, Beth, we've got a short time left here with you, a couple of minutes. And I love a lot of the titles here, just out of your book. What, out of all the different chapters, which one of these stood out to you the most that you really want somebody to hear today? Oh, I'm so glad you asked, asked that. You know, as I told you a moment ago, the book is birthed out of my own personal story. And I am a preacher's daughter, as I told you a moment ago. And there's a chapter in the book where I talk about um, the la my landmarks of faith those who are my uh, Mount Rushmore mm. and people in my life who have impacted me. And they are not, you know, some of them are stars. You know, some of them are people who have impacted me in, in the music ministry and industry. But really, those who made the greatest impact upon my life are people like my parents, my father, who was a pastor, who pastored one church for 40 years, my mother. I watched them serve tirelessly in a small community church. And they impacted an entire community. Most of all, they impacted my life. There are other people, like my Sunday school teacher, who was all who was old. Ever since I knew her, she was old. She was single, never married, never had a pretty dress, kind of wore, you know, just simple little shifts and never had her hair done, you know, things like that. But she was a great impact, one of the greatest impacts in my life. Wow. Love that. Well, Babby, it was so good to have you with us here. I want to remind all of our viewers, you can get her book. It's on our website. Each one, reach one, everyday ways you can shine God's light. It's a great read. It will highly encourage you on how you can evangelize and minister to many people around you. Babby, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Matt. And thank you, Amanda. God bless you all. You too. What a powerful story, yes. Matt. I just, I love to hear when people break out of the mold and they do the Great Commission. As she mm -hmm. said, it is not a suggestion. Oh, it's that. actually a commandment of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Well, stay tuned. We're going to come right back after this break, but we're going to be talking about, you know, the, she said it was birthed out of her own life. Yeah. How is that possible? Stay tuned. The barriers that stand between you and a blessed life may feel insurmountable, but Dr. Robert Jeffers assures you they can be overcome. This month, when you give your most generous gift to Cornerstone Television, we'll send you Dr. Jeffers' new book, Invincible, Conquering the Mountains That Separate You from the Blessed Life. Offering biblical insight and practical tools, he explains how you can conquer the hindrances of doubt, guilt, anxiety, discouragement, fear, and bitterness through prayer and faith in a God whose strength can move mountains. Request your copy when you support the gospel ministry of Cornerstone Television. Your generosity will evangelize the lost, encourage believers, provide excellent Bible teaching, and so much more. Call us today and become invincible, conquering the mountains that separate you from the blessed life. Call 888-665-4483 or give online at ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for giving. I absolutely love that interview with Babby, the depths that we just went to, and I pray that your heart was stirred. But she kept saying, you know, that being on that mission is birthed out of our own life. And I, I was thinking about, you know, we can build our house, picture yourself as a house on the sand or on the solid rock yes. of Jesus Christ. And, you know, we use Teen Challenge curriculum to teach, you know, disciples about salvation. And if you look at the image of this house, there's three important parts to it. Say, image yourself as this home. The basement, the foundation is the facts of God. The walls 
is your faith. God <laughs> gives us the faith to will to live out the facts of God, what we believe. And then you have this heating element or cooling element in the house. Now, let me ask you a question, Matt. Mm -hmm. If that heating element is working or not, does that affect the structure of the house? No. No, the heating element is like our feelings. Mm -hmm. So when you become someone who is saved, you choose to believe the facts of God's word and you will to live by faith God's word out in your own life, then you've got a complete structure. Do not go based on your feelings. I feel like a lot of time people receive salvation. Yes, I'm going to make this commitment to follow <laughs> God. But then they wake up and they don't feel saved. Yeah. And then they're doubting their salvation. And the enemy will cause you to doubt your salvation. Mm. So the first encouragement to you about your house structure is don't be moved by your feelings. When you're choosing to commit to Christ, these spiritual truths or these facts of the Bible of which we're going to talk about now, it does not matter how you feel. That's great. Yeah. All right, so put that slide up about these spiritual truths. Maybe if you have a picture or a camera at your house, take a picture of this. I'm going to go through them a little bit quickly. But these are some spiritual truths that's really important for us to believe. That God does exist mm -hmm. in this um, context of the Bible is there as well. That the Bible is true. That we have sinned. We've disobeyed God's law. But God loves me. He sent his son to live and die for me. Jesus is the only one who can forgive my sins. The penalty of sin is death. I can be saved from the penalty of sin by confessing my sin to Jesus and asking him to forgive me. And eight, I can become a Christian by allowing Jesus to be the leader of my life now. These are the truths from the Bible that are really important for you to solidify in your faith walk, that you know God exists, that you know his word is the truth. Because if you don't know these things, then we like to say you have cracks in your foundation wow. and it makes for a shaky one. You know that when the, the heat or the, the heaviness of the storm comes, you're gonna teeter. Your mm -hmm. house could literally collapse. You know, yeah. the houses around Pittsburgh, yep. some of them are older. My daughter's home's over 120 years old. Wow. And I mean, even some of the basement, you're like, is this good? But it is good. We made sure they, mm -hmm. you know, put their guards up and we have not 90 degree angles, but uh -huh. it's all secure, we'll just say. Let's go. But let me tell you, God's word needs to be our foundation. And yes. today, that's what this salvation, that's what. If you want to have the light of God, the saltiness that you need in this world, then you need to have your foundation on God's word. Mm -hmm. And you need to choose to will to live in those truths. And that's not always easy, but that's your walls and your roof of your structure. Yeah. And it's like, especially in what we're seeing happen in our world around us right now, if we're looking outwardly, man, we could be trembling and shaking in our shoes. But yeah. because our foundation is founded in his word, yes. a God who never moves, he is the same always. Mm. We are not moved. Do you hear me, family? We are not moved. We are not shaken. We're like trees planted by the water. Our, our roots go yes. deep into the soil of God's word. And this is the security of salvation that we long for you to have. It's why God gave voice to Cornerstone Television over 45 years ago, is because he wants you to have this security Amen. that you can only find in him. If I am speaking to you today and you're knowing, man, I need that solid foundation, mm. then I'm gonna ask you to do something. I'm gonna ask you to give us a call at 888-665-4483. I know that this step is just the beginning. You know, we could pray a prayer, but let me tell you, this life that you are committing with Christ mm -hmm. is way more than just a prayer. It is a lifestyle that you're gonna walk out, that you're gonna be like Babby, and yeah. you're gonna put this into motion. We want to have the opportunity to talk with you and get materials in your hands. Yes. 
But Matt, I just, you know, I feel the calling of God on people's yeah. lives yeah. like now more than ever, we need salt in the yes. earth. Right, right. And everything stems from what you're saying, mm -hmm. a firm foundation. That's right. You know, it reminds me of a quick story. Whenever my wife and I, we were searching for a home, we came across this beautiful house. I mean, it, it almost checked everything off the list from the exterior. And they spent, I mean, let's just say a lot of money on this brand new pool in the backyard. I'm like, wow, babe, this is like a vacation in our home. And so we get the inspection done, but the inspector comes through and he finds out there's tons of foundational issues and he recommends not going forward with it. He said, it's just gonna be a big headache in your future if you try to get this home. And it makes me think of our lives. You know, we could spend all this money, dress ourselves up, invest on all the things on the exterior, but without a good foundation, none of it matters. It's only gonna lead us to more heartache, more depression, more things of this world. And talking even about what Babby's mentioning here with evangelism, what makes a good evangelism? A firm foundation, setting your heart, your mind, your soul, everything on God's word. That right there bears fruit putting roots by the water. It says, abide in me and you will bear much fruit. The fruit for itself is a massive testimony to the people around you. Amanda, I look at your guys' family, your children, your marriage, you have a lot of fruit in your life. You know, what do you attest that to? What are the challenges that you guys face at times? Well, it is real life, that is for sure. Yeah. And it's not all pretty, but our trust, we had to learn to not be moved by outward circumstances yes. and to dig in and trust God. And that's really where it begins. And God is wooing you today. He desires to have such a beautiful relationship with you. And He desires to uphold you, to be your secure foundation. He loves you so much. And He has called you forth with purpose. He desires to use you. You might say, who me? He does. Wow. He sees you with purpose that only He breathed into you. And today I believe He is calling you to take that step to really lean in, to make Him the Lord of your life. Right now I just pray, Father, that you would lead, guide, and direct our friends, that they would lean into you, that they would call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. Father, I thank you that there's none other than you to give us the hope that we need to live every day out on purpose and with purpose for the kingdom of God.